Hello, Spokane music fans. Welcome to the Spokane Music Show on Spokane Talks Online. I'm Tim Brummett, your host. And as you all know, those who have listened to us before, this show is all about the local Spokane music scene in the region. We're going to talk to the artists. We're going to talk to the people in the nuts and bolts side of the business, the producers, the people with studios, the venue operators. And we're going to bring the Spokane music scene to you and uh, all the nuts and bolts and uh, um, keep you well informed about what's going on in Spokane musically. Every week we have a guest, and this week we have a special guest. His name is Zach Haval. Zach is a 24-year-old young musician just getting going in his career, has two CDs out already. And before I ask Zach a single question, Zach, this show's about music. How about playing one for us right now? Absolutely. Folks, Zach of all. So this is a song off the new record, uh, Halfway Home. It's a song called Long Days and Sleepless Nights. I awoke in the early hours of dawn When the orange sun drew a crimson sky And pensively sat by my door Oh, my time is short and my days are long And I've spent many sleepless nights Thinking about the way things sometimes go Well, for me to leave you now would be suicide To forsake my pride to run and hide The last face I'd want to see before I died Is yours Time was just an idea And love was a four-letter word I heard you speak And my knees felt weak As though I'd walked a thousand miles On long days and sleepless nights Very nice, Zach. Very nice. I like the harmonica work there, too. Thank you. Well, Zach, let's talk about your music. Let's Absolutely. talk about you a little bit. Tell me about yourself. You, I know you're 20 years old. Yep. You gave me a few seconds of uh, info about where you have been in music and where you are right now with your CDs. Fill the people in about uh, uh, how it all started, uh, what your goals are, and what music is all about to you. Well, I think uh, my folk singing career really started just before um, high school, actually, um, I, we had a huge family get together where um, half of my mom's family came in from wherever they live. You know, I've got cousins down in uh, down in the south and in uh, Nevada, and, uh, and I think Carolina as well. So, and they came, and my uncle David, uh, we and I just got out the guitars and we started singing. And uh, back then, I was more of like into the rock stuff. Like I joined a rock band, so I was playing a lot of you know Van Halen and Led Zeppelin for them. And then my Uncle David had my acoustic guitar, and he sang a very popular song, which I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, Bob Dylan's Blown in the Wind. And I did not know a verse to that song. And everybody else was singing along with him. Blown in the Wind? I've never heard that song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just thought, well, gee, what a powerful song that he can get. Even my dad, who's not been known to be a huge folk music fan, knew the words to the song. So, I mean, I just sat back and you know, just literally blown away by the power of that song, and so I think really from that point on, I've been a folk singer. So folk singing is what it's about. I mean, obviously the songs I've heard that you're done are from the folk singing genre, and you're a storyteller. That's the great thing about folk folk music. It tells stories, and usually people who write folk songs and sing folk songs write them from the heart. Oh, absolutely. They're not trying to be commercial. Uh, let's talk about songwriting. That last song you wrote was from the heart. Uh-huh. I could tell. I sometimes wonder how a 20-year-old young man or some of the young people, we had a young lady on that was 24 years old earlier, wrote some very deep songs. So I wonder at your young age, how did you get to the point where you're such an old soul with these things? T talk, talk to us a little bit about writing a song. What causes you to, to pick up the pen and spin a song? Well, I mean, there are many factors that go into that. One of the things I've learned in the brief, you know, five years I've been doing this 
is that there are not only just one way of writing a song, but many, and it really just depends on who, wh where I am and what I'm feeling and if I have the guitar with me or not. Like David Crosby always says, like you have to be, like at the piano or at the guitar, you have to open the door to a song, you know, and Bob Dylan can just sit down at a typewriter and write and he'll come out with something that's amazing. For me, it's a combination of all those things. Um, you know, sometimes when I'm just being real quiet, it's like fishing, you have to be real quiet to catch the good ones. And I believe Tom Waits well said, said that. Yeah. Well said. Who are some of your favorite songwriters? Who are some of your influences? Uh, Bob Dylan has been uh, a big one. And then, um, of course, there's Shirley Bassey. It's written all over my music. And uh, not really. But um, Bob Dylan, Paul Simon really got me going with the songwriting um, even more so than Bob. Um, and then Phil Oaks I've been listening to a lot lately. And just a lot of the older guys especially have been... Uh, kind of, you know, revisiting how I do this whole folk thing, because to me it was just singing and songwriting, but there's a whole other side of that. Um, Bob Dylan wrote in his book, Chronicles, Volume 1, that there are a thousand faces to folk music, and you have to meet every single one of them if you want to sing this stuff. So he's probably met all of them. I've only met a small fraction of them. Like, I just discovered sea shanties last week, so I have a lot to learn. Well, it's really, as an old musician myself in my 60s, it's really <laughs> cool to see a young guy like you being inspired by real music, mm -hmm. not the stuff that's being produced mm -hmm. today. And I'm not just a grandpa railing against today's music. I'm just telling you, as a musician, today's music is formulaic. Oh, Sounds yeah. like all the country, all the rock was produced at the same studios by the same producers. Play. And there's no expression. There's no feeling in there. Nope. And, you know, the songs that come out that do have feeling mm -hmm. are hits. Oh, there absolutely. are hits, people like Lady Gaga, who write from the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, Taylor Swift, she writes from the heart about her teenage broken heart and what oh, have yeah. you. A billion sellers. So I commend you. Bob Dylan influence, right on, yep. right on. Bob Dylan changed a lot of things. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you, his music changed a lot of things, protest songs, and oh, brought, yeah. brought a, about some social awareness. I don't want to talk too much. This is about you. No uh, real quickly, tell us about your family real quick, and then I'm going to ask you to sing us to a break. Okay. All right? Give us a minute about your family and, who, and who, where you're from. Well, I'm from here in Spokane. I've lived here all of my life. Um, I live at home with my dad, Derek, my mom, Cindy, as you know, from mm -hmm. the writer of War Bonds. And then I have four brothers. I have My oldest brother is Ethan, and he's 25. My second oldest is Alex, who's 22. And my younger brother, Sam, is 15. And he's sort of a jack-of-all-trades, really. He's done, you know, he's tried music. He's done puppeteering, actually, and made YouTube videos. Oh, how cool. Yeah. Sounds like you come from a creative family. Yeah. We're going to go to break. We're already at the halfway point of the show, and it's capping so fast. <laughs> we like to ask our guests to sing us to break. So will you spin us another one of your uh, tunes? That Folks, Absolutely. Zach of all. Absolutely. So this is a song called She Was a Lady. Sitting in our house on a Thursday afternoon and Playing cards Crimson hair falling in her face While the wind softly knocks She was the bravest of the brave And truest of the true She was a lady when I could not be a gentleman And she had my love And I had her love too well, She had the skin that was soft as sand So pure as snow Eyes like a lighthouse to guide me home She was the bravest of the brave And truest of the true She was a lady When I could not be a gentleman And she had my love I had her love too
Hi, this is Tim Brummett again, Spokane Talk, uh, the Spokane Music Show on Spokane Talks Online. I'm sorry I stumbled there, folks. We are with 20-year-old singer-songwriter Zach Haval, who has uh, entertained us this morning with a couple of his original songs. Uh, Zach, we're going to continue with this interview because I'm really intrigued by your folk roots. Not too many 20-year-old young songwriters who are banding about the names of uh, uh, David Crosby and Bob Dylan mm-hmm. uh, like you are. And I'd like to probe into that a little bit more. No uh, when you go back to the beginning, and this is easy for you, Zach. <laughs> you only have to go back 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> go back to the beginning. You're a little kid. What made you want to play music? There must have been something you heard on the radio. There must have been something your mom was singing or your, or whatever. What's your earliest memory? Okay. By the way, I ask this question of every single guest. Oh, that's no problem. Well, um, I guess my mom used to sing to us when we were, you know, babies in the cradle. And one of the songs she used to sing is Where Have All the Flowers Gone? Oh, you gosh. know, Pete Seeger sang that and Peter, Paul, and Mary did. So, I mean, there could have been some of that, you know, cognitively, you know, as I was growing up, just having that really early introduction to folk music. And then when I wanted to play guitar, I just remember in uh, sixth grade or maybe fifth grade even, fourth or fifth actually, um, I was sitting in the bleachers. I went to Northwest Christian Elementary School and we were having um, a chapel that week and I, there was a kid who was a grade or two above me playing guitar in the worship band and I thought well gee if this kid was only a year or two older than me he can do this why can't I so you know I spent years nagging and I finally got a guitar and I've been at it ever since that was 10 years ago now well that's the way it starts Zach that's the way it starts Zach you've got two CDs let's talk about your CDs a little okay. bit and the experience of recording a CD I mean I, I've done two CDs myself yeah uh, you know, you got to write the songs. Mm-hmm. You have to do their arrangements. Yeah. You got to get in the studio and work with an engineer and yeah. get it all right. Tell us about the studio experience from a twenty-year-old perspective. It must have been exciting for oh, you. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, recently, um, I when we did the last album, uh, I actually met a guy a few years ago. His name's Josh Grill. Hi, Josh, if you're listening, and. Um, we, uh, I met him at, we did a summer concert at uh, Spokane First Church in the Nazarene. They do a back-to-school blast, and that's where I met him. And he's, you know, he gave me his business card. He says, I record. And so I did the, the Loser off the album, which is a single with him. And then I really liked his stuff. Like, he was super relaxed, and he, you know, he makes sure you're comfortable and stuff. So I really thought, you know, I can do a record with this guy. And I had pressure with friends to do another CD, so I called him up and I says, hey, I want to I do another record, and I want you to be the producer. He said, yeah, let's meet and talk about it. So we met and we talked about it and where I wanted to go with it and, you know, the songs, how many songs were going to be on it and stuff like that. And um, Then we started recording it around f- October and we finished around December. How many songs on this latest record? There are 13 songs. 13. All I, originals. You, are they all your songs? Absolutely. They're all originals, yeah. no covers. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, you brought up something that seems to run with, uh, consistent with every artist in the world, I think, at least here in America, okay? Right. Church. Yeah. You sing in church. Oh, yeah. I sing in church. Every person we've had here so far, I ask them, go back to the beginning, they sing in church. Isn't oh. that great? Yeah. I mean, I'm just making a comment. Are you still active? Do you sing in church? Are you singing praise music? Are you, are you up there doing that? Uh, not in church, but I still do enjoy all of the gospel stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like Blind Lemon Jefferson sings a lot of gospel music, and of course, Gary Davis, and mm-hmm. then... Who I, whose gospel music I really love is Mississippi John Hurt mm-hmm. um, from down in uh, the, the Delta uh, in the 1930s. He made uh, only a handful of recordings. Like, I think he did like 50 songs down in like the 30s and didn't, that was it. And then he started, he worked for the rest of his life. And then in like the 60s, Alan Lomox, I think of all people, found him down there working, retired. And I, I'd like to ask you, 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 are, you keep dropping names of artists and performers that uh, uh, are from so long ago. Right. I need to ask you, how did that association start with you at such a young age? How did you gain an appreciation for these artists and these songwriters like John Hurt, you know, who I've heard of. I don't even know I've heard his music, but I, I've heard of him as a great uh, songwriter and a, a gospel songwriter yeah. and musician. How did you get so involved? Give us a little 
couple minutes about how you got involved with these old these artists from so long ago and how they influenced you. Well, I really started with Bob Dylan. I, you know, I figured out if I wanted to be like Bob Dylan and be as good a songwriter, I had to track down every influence he's ever listed. So I started at Woody Guthrie, That's and I kind of, you know, I kind of went there. And uh, Mississippi John Hurt was like a, a very interesting experience. How I discovered him. He, uh, I was doing ho supposed to be doing homework. I was listening to Pandora, and <laughs> he uh, he popped up on my Bob Dylan radio station, and I thought there's clear as day that this this had to be some sort of angel, that there's there, and even to this day there's nothing that I have heard by him that uh, would convince me otherwise. I, he was an angel, and uh, I, the first I was Richland Woman Blues was the first song I ever heard by. Uh, what was that again? Give me the Richland Woman Blues. Was it, and I, I immediately set to work learning it, and then um, I traced it back to the Smithsonian Folkways Anthology of American Folk Music, if you've heard of that. Uh, back in the 50s, right around the big folk music revival, one uh, music historian collected all these old folk songs and put them into one compilation. And so folk singers like Phil Oaks and Bob Dylan and even Ramblin' Jack Elliott, they all had this anthology, and that's where they all got their start into folk music. And you say that anthology you found at the Smithsonian? Uh, yeah, you can get it off Amazon right now too. Even wow. they still make, they still print it. I admire your uh, your love and dedication for folk music. I think you'll go a long way. Thank you. You know, folk music is not polished. No. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not polished. It's not overly produced. And to that end, I'd like to ask you about, and I think something that would be of great interest to the listeners, a producer. We all hear that word, producer. Mm -hmm. Will you explain to me what a producer did for you in your record in the studio? What is a producer to you? What does a producer do? Well, um, you know, I'm busy singing and stuff, so Josh really, he... Uh, he monitored, you know, his computer screens and stuff like that. And uh, if there was something, you know, not quite right or something like that, he would let me know, you know, if we needed to do another take or, you know, even offered because he also sings and does music too. Most of them do. He, you know, I mean, I remember recording The Loser. He's like, well, why don't you try doing it with a little bit more dynamic? And so I switched it up a bit, and you know, and that was the take we got. Was so I mean, he uh, was a sort of like a foil almost. You know, if I was. If I, something didn't come by me, you know, like there's all sorts of like little inconsistencies when people are playing that you don't really notice unless you're like watching and listening. And his, uh, you know, his eyes and ears are super trained that he can multitask, like he can monitor the tracks and the levels and then also find the mistakes if there were any. Would you say your producer, Josh, what's his name again? Josh Krell. Yeah, let's give him a little shout out, Josh. Mm -hmm. Would you say that he, I'm going to tell you my, my, my word or, or my feeling about producers. Okay. They have a symphony in their head. Oh, absolutely. Does Josh have a symphony in his head? Certainly, I would imagine so. They, they can't be a producer yeah. and craft your songs to make your songs better without that symphony yeah. in their head. The producers kind of help the wheels go around in the record business. Oh, yeah. They make a lot of money, too. Yeah, you, he just, picked the right career. <laughs> just, just so you know. Yeah. You know, we're going to come up. I'm going to take a look at our engineer here real quick. Okay. And uh, this is live radio, folks. Uh, we're going to come to the end of the show here soon. And, Zach, I want to give you a chance to sing another cut okay. off of your... Uh, record, but I want to ask you a couple more quick questions because we don't get too many young guys like you. Where are you going with your music? What are your plans? I don't really have any plans. This is all I have. It's pretty much all I know. It's, uh, it's either this or, you know, TV repairman or something mm -hmm. like that. A are you going to get out there and play? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to play it until my hands fall off or until and I die. I know you told me you have something coming at the Gonzaga Coffee Shop during the holiday season. Is yeah, it, I'll be at Gonzaga Coffee House on December 9th from That's 8 to great. 9. Yeah. That's great. Do you have a website or a Facebook page? Uh, yeah, you can go find me at uh, facebook.com slash uh, Zach of All Music. H-V-A-L. H-V-A-L, yes. Norwegian name, I asked Zach. But yeah. Zach, that's Z-A-C-H, H-V-A-L. Mm -hmm. And find him on Facebook. Like him. And the record is also available on Amazon and iTunes and all the other streaming sources. And the name of your record again? Uh, Halfway Home. Halfway Home. Zach, we're coming to the end of the show. Will you okay. sing us to the finish? Yeah, this is a song called Lonesome Train Blues. Folks, thanks for being with us on the Spokane Music Show. Well, I believe I'll go down to the train station Catch a train Oh, I'll go down to the train station And 
catch a train My girl done called me a disgrace Well, she said I gotta quit my messing around Quit my messing around and straighten out Quit my messing around and straighten out But there's one problem, darling, I ain't done nothing wrong Well, I'm riding that lonesome train And all these tears are falling like rain These tears are falling like rain Oh, that woman that I love, she put my heart in pain The Spokane Region